When I Love McConan joined Drake's OVO label in 2014, it seemed like his career was going to put him in a position that would see him eating off his music for several years. At the time, McConan had everything going for him. He was signed to the biggest artist in the game. He had a chart-topping single with Drake called Tuesday that peaked at number 12 on the Billboard Hot 100. And with all the success that McConan achieved within a short space of time, many of us thought that he would be a mainstay within hip-hop culture. Unfortunately, this was not the case and McConan was dropped from OVO in 2016. After being dropped from OVO, McConan has struggled to remain relevant within hip-hop conversations and this begs the question, what happened to I Love McConan? So on April 12, 2016, I Love McConan did an interview with Complex Magazine where he got to speak about the alleged beef between him and Drake and this is what he had to say. I cannot thank OVO, 40, Oliver, Future and Mr. Morgan enough for all that they have done for my career. No words can express how much I appreciate Drake for being a part of the success of Tuesday. I'm sure the haters will have something negative to say, but all in all my choice to be solely on Warner Brothers records was the right thing for me and for my best interest. Sorry, there's no beef to report. Now at this point it seemed like McConan and Drake parted ways due to a mutual agreement. McConan seemed thankful to Drake and everything he had done for his career. However, McConan's narrative started to change soon after the interview and on August 30th, 2016, McConan had an awkward encounter with Drake at the VMAs that left him feeling perplexed. According to McConan, Drake and his hefty security team walked up to him at the event and told him that they were gonna mess him up. The incident didn't lead to any physical violence, however McConan felt a type of way about the entire confrontation and this is what he had to say about the whole thing. I was threatened by others, someone I saw called look up to saying we are gonna mess you up the next time we see you and I was like let me stop being me. I started to go back to I'm just gonna go eat anything and just be hiding myself and shit. And then I was like no, I'm not going to do that no more, I don't give a damn, I'm me. And that's what led to me coming out and shit. Now I'm sure a lot of you guys are wondering where the beef between Drake and McConan began. So I'm gonna break it down for you guys. Just for some context, McConan signed to OVO in 2014. However, when he was signed to OVO, old tweets resurfaced in which McConan clowned Drake and this is what he said. I'm so tired of hearing about Drake's overhyped washed up hat already. What a big intention like you doing listening to Drake. Drake is mad corny. I just heard that practice song straight corn puff. I don't know how I feel about Muppet Drake writing a letter to Aaliyah, that's weak. Honestly, they need to stop. John B is better than Drake. I'm not another Drake stan. Hey, 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 I better find your lovin'. Now, when McConan was asked whether their beef started from the old tweets, this is what he had to say. I mean, that can't just be it, right? We can get past that. Excuse me for being messed up in the hood and wanting to be a comedian. Now in my opinion, Drake is the kind of guy who gets offended very easily whenever negative things are said about him and I'll explain why. So in 2013, Drake was responsible for one of the biggest tours of all time called Would You Like a Tour? The tour began on October 18, 2013 and it ran until March 5, 2015 with 66 shows scheduled across North America, Europe and Oceania. Future was an opening act across the various legs of the tour, however he was allegedly kicked off the tour after Drake took offense to the following statement Future made about Drake's Nothing Was The Same album. Drake made an album that is full of hits, but it does not grab you. They're not possessive. They don't make you feel the way I do. I want you to fall in love. A few days after the announcement of Future being kicked off Drake's tour was made, Future tried to change the narrative by suggesting the fact that Drake did not kick him off the tour to begin with. However, most people to this day still believe that Future and Drake sorted out their differences behind closed doors and attempted to change the narrative before it got out of hand. Now I bring this up to say that Drake gets offended very easily and he takes the comments that other people say about him very seriously. So if Drake was willing to kick Future off his tour for saying one harmless critique of nothing was the same, then is it too far-fetched to believe that Drake would stop messing with McConan after those tweets surfaced? Now when McConan was asked why Drake signed him to OVO to begin with, his answer was very straightforward. According to the man himself, the main reason Drake signed him to OVO was because they needed a hot song. However, after Tuesday was released and McConan started to gain mainstream attention, Drake and OVO began to distance themselves from McConan and this forced him to remain in a label situation that was very detrimental to his growth and his career. According to McConan, before Tuesday was released as a single, Drake had nothing but praise for the man. However, Drake's actions after the song gained success made it seem like all the praise Drake gave him was fake to begin with. 
he's all in my face telling me, you're one of the greatest songwriters ever, da da da. Just blowing me up, bruh. And I'm that little kid from tragedy right now. You could see it. It was written all over my face. I'm depressed as hell. And then I'm like, can y'all tweet out my mixtape? Can I get a feature? Can I get production? No, no, no. So I'm just over here in prison. Am I in prison? And it's like, who are y'all talking about? Cause y'all definitely haven't been talking about Maconan lately. And they know my name very well. They used to say, I love your name. Remember when it made change over there? Made more change than any other dude on the label. Now after hearing what Maconan had to say, it's very clear that Drake and OVO used him to gain one successful song on the charts. And after that they didn't really care much about the direction that Maconan's career was heading in. So after being dropped from OVO in 2016, Maconan went through a period of drought in which he didn't release much music and when he did release music it didn't really go anywhere. However earlier in 2019 he tried to make a comeback with an EP titled M3. The project had one feature from Gucci Mane, however McConan took issue with Gucci Mane's lack of support of the record once the song was released. No disrespect to Gucci Mane, but he didn't support the record that we just put out together and I never got to meet him in person as well. It was just a business dealing and it's the music industry and people deal how they deal in their business but I haven't had any vocal support from any of them. So McConan is an artist that grew up idolizing Gucci Mane. One of his career goals was to eventually collaborate with Gucci at one point in his career so I can fully understand why McConan felt the type of way. However at the end of the day once another artist gives you a feature it is up to you to promote the record. So in this case Gucci Mane didn't do anything wrong. Now McConan's career has been interesting to say the least. His career makes us realize that even though things appear to be perfect in the music industry from the outside looking in, there's definitely a lot of drama that takes place behind the scenes. I hope McConan is able to find that lightning in a bottle once more because at the end of the day he does have something different to offer the hip hop community. So I'm gonna end the video right there. If you guys like this type of content, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification button. It's your boy Ali. Peace.